This is Lynn Fraser with the Killaby Center, and I'm really happy to be here today with Joan Tollison. So we're replaying her interview from last year, but I wanted to catch up with you, Joan, and just talk a little bit about your book. You know, when we talked last time, you just were in the midst of um, some diagnoses of cancer and treatment coming up, and there was a bunch of stuff going on for you. And then sometime between then and now, you've managed to publish this book, finish the book, and publish it. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about the book and what people might find in there. I love the title. It's such a, it just kind of draws you in. It's like, oh my God, there is going to be a time when I'm not going to be able to fix things. What then? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, people love the title. (laughs) Um, Yeah, Um, because I think our culture is so obsessed with self-improvement that um, it's a huge relief. you know, people just kind of laugh. <laughs> um, but, and, and of course, I'm not in any way um, disparaging genuine transformation like addiction recovery and so on. You know, that's not yeah. the point. Um, yeah. and, and I do talk in the book about, I differentiate between what I call genuine transformation and the kind of self-improvement that our culture is so obsessed with um, mm-hmm. based on, you know, deficiency stories and constantly pursuing future perfection. Um, But the book, you know, basically I started writing it in 2003 when I was in Chicago. I had moved to Chicago to be with my mother in her final years. And um, and I was going through menopause at the time. So um, and then I've been writing it ever since 2003. It was published this last November. So it basically covers that 16, I think, 16 year period um, in which, you know, I I went from being in my 50s to being in my, and along the way went through the death of my mother and uh, my te- my main teacher, Tony Packer, and several, you know, other, my first lover, um, mm-hmm. and a number of other people. And uh, so I would found myself just kind of writing about aging and dying and, mm-hmm. uh, and realized that I was also really writing about living. And, mm-hmm. um, and of course, also what's going on right now in the world. I mean, we are in, um, you know, facing what many people feel is irreversible, devastating climate change that will wipe us out. Some people think there is some hope of recovery, Um, but certainly we're facing, you know, a very catastrophic uh, situation. And um, so it's not only a personal dying or the dying of friends, uh, but something that's going on. We're watching Australia burn as we speak, Um, you know, the, the Amazon rainforest has been burning etc so um so it's what i'm trying to do in the book is is um write about aging in a way that's uh that doesn't uh, uh that that really reveals the the nitty gritty difficult side of aging that is often sort of out of the picture in the things that we hear um and but to do that in a way that sees the beauty uh, uh, in that messiness and that difficulty. And, and then of course, at, during the time I was writing this book, I also got cancer, as you mentioned earlier, and I, I have recovered. Um, but I, I live now with an ostomy. Um, it was an anal cancer and you know, an ostomy is a bag of poop uh, on my belly. And uh, I mean, I had cancer in all the places you're not supposed to talk about out loud. So, so it was, um, it's, it explores all of those those things, um, um, hopefully in a in a way that's both realistic and yet um, seeing the beauty in them, and um, um, and from my spiritual perspective, which bas- basically is one that sees the sacred in everything, mm-hmm. and uh, even in poop, <laughs> which I've seen a lot of in the last few years, and. Uh, um, yeah, so that's, and the book is a mix of personal stories um, about all this and spiritual reflections. So it's yeah. both together, woven together. So that's, that's kind of the book in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things that I really like, I, you know, as I was just beginning the book, even in the first couple of chapters was, and it, it's very much in line with your own writings, is that it's not this spiritual bypassing, everything is you know, a, a dance in a meadow with the sunshine or something. There's real life here. And and that's not everything. So 
not to deny one or the other, but to really kind of explore what that really means for a person. And as you're going into this phase of your life where your body is getting older and you, and you talk about the dissolution and the things that are falling apart. And, you know, I'm in my mid sixties and I'm noticing that as well. Things don't work the way they did before. And, and my body's drier and my joints <laughs> hurt more. And I'm, you know, I'm in this beautiful place that requires me to have a healthy body in mm -hmm. order to stay here. And so I, I've just been noticing the last few years, there's a lot more thoughts about, well, maybe I don't really have time to put off getting healthy the way I always kind of thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll do that later. So it's interesting to be in this position of, there's this reality of the body. Yeah, and, and even no matter how much we do uh, to be healthy, yeah, uh, you know, so many of uh, the great spiritual teachers died of cancer. Um, Ramana, Nisargadatta, Suzuki Roshi, Katagira, you know, the list goes on, Noreen Stewart, the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. uh, my teacher, Tony Packer, who she didn't have cancer, but she spent the last 10 years of her life uh, with a very severe, uh, you know, she was chronic illness that was involved uh, excruciating pain and mobility disappearance until she was bedridden the last few years. Yeah. And, and she was someone who had, you know, eaten great food and, right. you know, exercise, taking long walks every day, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, there's, there's really, I mean, eventually we all die. I'm in reality. And no matter how much we care for our aging bodies, um, like in my case, I wouldn't be able to live um, in the way you're living anymore. It's just no longer an option right. um, because of the ostomy and various things. And there may be people living in those situations with ostomies, but I'm in a somewhat different situation because I'm managing it with one hand and Everybody right. who has one is in a somewhat different situation, depending on a lot of various factors that I won't go into. But, but, right. um, but anyway, so, you know, so I'm really, um, I can't travel anymore, really. I'm, I'm, you know, much more um, um, limited in terms of the kinds of things I can do, which is okay with me because of, um, I mean, I think I might have found that really difficult if I was 25 or 30. <laughs> right, right. But at this stage of life, I'm, I'm kind of. Um, it's almost a blessing to be, a, to be sort of tethered to where I am. <laughs> <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about that process for you of kind of settling in and accepting, you know, in your book, you talk about that a bit too, of just what is it that's happening right now? And, and this is it, this is what's going on and how, how you've worked with that. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, we really have no choice. <laughs> I mean, we can resist, but um, but it doesn't really do anything except make it worse <laughs> as we begin to discover. So, um, you know, for me, my spiritual path and everyone's is different, but but really is about um, being this moment, being with whatever's here. Um, and by being with it, I mean, I don't mean thinking about it, but really just completely experiencing it. And not that I consciously sit around complete, like when I was going through the cancer treatment, it mm -hmm. was excruciatingly painful some of the time. I mean, my genitals and anus were being literally burned and quite painful. And, you mm -hmm. know, I didn't spend every moment, you know, consciously feeling into that. I watched movies and TV and, you know, did things also to, you know, distract myself from the pain, which I think is perfectly legitimate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, but, but, Basically, so I just want to clarify because sometimes people get the idea that you know you're not supposed to do anything like that. You just have to be with the pain constantly. Right. Um, so there's some kind of a, a spiritual gold star if we can be present with it all the time. Yeah, we're back to the self improvement model. You know, yeah. where where spirituality is this goal. You know, I'm, I'm I'm trying to be completely free of all thoughts, free of all troubling emotions. Uh, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, never distracted, never, never disturbed, you know, just kind of in the state of perpetual bliss. And then of course we fail and, uh, right. and we feel like we're not a, very good at this. We are a failure. Um, so to me, it's just being with all of that. And I think kind of over time, that goal of perfection falls away, at least if you're lucky and, right. and you're more willing to just be with the actuality of how it is. And, um, 
and that includes the transcendent perspective of the you know the space in which it's all happening or the the vast wholeness of everything um but not the kind of transcendence that that denies the body or uh the everyday or or uh the the reality of of you know to me it's about really feeling the energy in the body feeling the sensations being this moment hearing the airplane smelling the rose you know mm -hmm. tasting the coffee <laughs> it's not about um leaving all that behind but yes seeing it in a bigger perspective at the same time which is the transcendent you know seeing it in this bigger context and um and when you go right to the heart of it actually when you go right to the heart of any sensation what do you find i mean you find space openness nothing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you kind of get to the same place whether you zoom out or zoom in <laughs> so for someone who's experiencing um some kind of dissolution in the body maybe a, a health crisis or aging or pain of some kind you talk about that a lot in the book of kind of your process of working with that is there kind of a quick answer or a pointer <laughs> a nice quick fix <laughs> just do this <laughs> And well, you'll be fine. <laughs> it's kind of against the the whole point of the book, I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, there are many things that we can that we that we can do, and I mean, I try to all of them. You know, I mean, I had everything yeah. from CBD oil and salves of various kind and pain pills, and you know, all that mm -hmm. to um, you know meditation and feeling into it deeply, and you know, all of that to. <laughs> To turning on the TV and watching a good movie on Netflix, <laughs> right, right. Um, you know, whatever, um, whatever works. Uh, you know, and sometimes nothing works, and you're yeah. just feeling horrible. You know, and then, mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, you can notice that you're <clears throat> feeling horrible. You're just feeling horrible. You kind of begin to notice that desire to get away from it. You know, that kind of frantic desire to get away from it, mm -hmm. and. You know, this is what I discovered in Zen years ago when you had to sit through hours of pain. Mm -hmm. that as long as you're mentally resisting it, you know, thinking about this is going to kill me, when's it going to end, you know, that makes it worse. It tightens everything up, it makes it worse. And when you can completely relax and just allow it to be the way it is, kind of allow yourself to die in it, mm -hmm. um, then. Sometimes it just disappears completely, but at the very least it becomes bearable and sometimes even interesting. And, um, um, but if you sort of are doing that as a practice, you know, kind of with the idea that this is going to work. Right. <laughs> you know, about Because <laughs> yeah. there again, about that little, you know, yeah, that mm -hmm. little, um, I don't like this. I want to get to that, which is natural too. I mean, if you're in pain, naturally you want to feel better. I mean, it's kind of natural, yeah. but, of course. but um, yeah. So yeah, I don't think there is a magic bullet for getting older <laughs> or for being in pain. Um, you know, there's a lot of techniques and practices and wisdom and things that help, but mm -hmm. I don't think there's a magic bullet. I think in a way um, we just go through it and um and we find our way, and um, and amazingly enough, a lot of these things that it, you know seem so horrible and are so horrible in some way, um, are also uh, blessings in some way. Um, I mean, I feel like my cancer was a blessing, and I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. I'm just, I honestly mean that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's, you know, I've seen that before in my life with having one hand and going through addiction and all kinds of things that these things that the suffering in our life is often what transforms allows us to transform and see new things and wake up and so true and, yeah so um you know we think you know if we were choosing our life you know we'd leave all that out 
And yet, I, as I say in the book, uh, you know, I, I can't quote myself exactly, but, you know, something to the effect that, that you know, I feel like a life of nothing but sunny days and, and uh, happy moments would not be nearly as rich as the life we actually have, where there's actually a lot of pain and suffering and brutality and cruelty and everything else. Right. And then somehow we kind of get practical in a way and just really notice what's beautiful too that it's not yeah yeah Yeah. I mean I I mean I found that with the cancer for example um I mean I was already someone who really appreciated every moment but in many ways but you know it just intensified I mean I just am even more grateful for the simple things in life the the taste of a cup of tea the, the you know the uh the, the the little drops of dew on a leaf, the sounds of rain, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And um, so I think in a way you wake up more and more to the beauty of what's here instead of these ideas that we have about what would be better and what I'd rather have and what hopefully I might someday attain and, <laughs> and all of that. We just sort of wake up to, and one of, that's one of the great things about getting old because your youthful fantasies of how you're going to turn a wonderful, perfect person don't really hold up very well when you're in your seventies, you know, it's sort of like, mm, maybe not, <laughs> you know, I'm still biting my fingers, you know, it's like, it hasn't gone away. Maybe it will, but you know, and so I'm at peace now with the fact that maybe it won't, maybe uh-huh. it won't. Mm-hmm. And that's actually a big relief. Um, you know, and I hope it goes away, but I still hope it goes away. <laughs> I'd love it to go away. It's a compulsion but it's an impulse control uh, disorder, a compulsion. Yeah. But so far it hasn't. It's mm-hmm. gotten better, but it hasn't gone away. And, and you know, that's, I think, part of what happens with aging is you just kind of accept yourself the way you are and life the way it is. You know, you realize that when you're young, you think you want to fix the world. You know, you're going to have world peace and, right. and, yeah. and all this stuff. And then you realize as you get older, no, no it, it's not not going to go that way <laughs> and some progressive change but it'll go the other way then for a while mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and eventually whether it's through climate change or whatever the sun will explode it will all end you know i mean that death is part of life and so it's like um you, you just eventually sort of get to a point if you're lucky where you accept yourself the way you are and the world the way it is and i mean not in every moment there are still moments where you know, I want somebody to be different from how they are. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I've noticed that that's suffering, that it doesn't actually work. Yeah. 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 You know, I think that's a, a beautiful kind of mature place to be. One thing I, you know, I'd probably love it if I had my 15 year old body, but certainly not my 15 year old mind or my outlook yeah. on the world or <laughs> You know, and so many people are so driven that, you know, and so full of shame and self-loathing and their inner critic is just always, always active, wanting them to be different and to come to this place of going, well, you know, that's actually not how life works. And maybe it's okay just to be the way I am. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a huge relief. It's a huge relief, you know, and it's, yeah, yeah, make it peace with with how it is. It doesn't mean you, you, you know, you're still, I mean, you know, I still plan to vote for somebody else in the next election. And, right. and, you know, I'm not particularly moved to go do political activism anymore, but I could be, I mean, you know, it's not, it doesn't mean you don't necessarily do things that, that you know, but, um, you know, you might still go to a, re- a addiction recovery program or whatever, you know, it doesn't mean that you're not going to do certain things, but, or like you, you know, doing whatever you can to keep your body healthy enough that you can continue to live in this place that you love, you know? Right. Um, you know, fine. That's fine. It's, it's the sort of, you know, the suffering is in the idea that you have to keep your body this way. which <laughs> or, is that the- it's, or that it's a trade. Like if, if I do these things, then I'll get to live here. Because it doesn't right. work that way either. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And that, and that if I can't live here, I'll be miserable I have to make work and and then you just do what you do I mean I certainly do what I do to deal with the cancer and Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. yeah um, 
yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's uh, a, a little glimpse into the book. I, I'm, I'm about halfway through, but I'm really looking forward to, to getting all the way through. I just, I'm kind of absorbing it. And one of the things I really like about what you're writing is that you really are reflecting on what's happened as well and bringing in the non-dual perspective and your own spiritual um, maturity as well as the difficulties that you're working with. So it's a very practical down to earth book. There's a lot of spiritual writing that's kind of out there in the clouds and this isn't a book like that at all. So yeah. Very grounded. Yeah. yeah, I've never been gray out in the clouds. <laughs> I mean, I have my transcendent moments, you know, yeah. or, you know it's not like, yeah. but, um, you know, to me, is spirituality is not about always being in some, you know, there are moments in meditation where there's just beautiful, spacious emptiness or something, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and if I tune in, it's right here, right now, even in the midst right. of this conversation, it's always here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm not like in a place of, you know, sort of deeply feeling into that 24-7. Nobody is, you know, well, right. maybe if they're sitting in a cave or something. Right, right. <laughs> but even then, they're probably not 24-7. Yeah. Um, I try to show in the book that it's, I feel like it's all included. Like, like there's these kind of different, I don't know if you want to call them layers or dimensions or whatever, with perspectives on reality. That reality can see itself in many different ways. Mm -hmm. And you know, it can be seen as pure consciousness or felt as pure consciousness. It can be seen as, you know, political drama and felt as political drama. It can be seen as, you know, sensations and energy and felt that way. And none of them are, are you know, they're all valid. They're all part of this whole happening. They're just ways of, of in which it sees itself or experiences itself. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's not about making one right or the or wrong, you know, it's like they're all, so to me, spirituality is not the opposite of secular life or everyday lollocks or anything like that. It's, it's, it's all there. It's all included. To me, that's non-duality. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And literally it's not dual. It's not separate. Yes, exactly. Nothing is separate. It's all one whole yeah. undivided whole. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's lovely i'll encourage people to watch your interview and to pick up your book yeah thank you so much for coming back on well thank you for having me and uh, as always i'm deeply grateful for you and scott and the and the killaby center and all the wonderful work that you're all doing it's um, um it's a blessing to the world so thank you well, thank you Hello, this is Lynn Fraser with the Killaby Center Radical Recovery Summit. We are so excited to bring you the lineup for January 10th to 19th, 2020. Go to RadicalRecoverySummit.com to see the new headliners for 2020 and to sign up. You can watch free January 10th to 19th or buy an all-access pass.